Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video we're going to be doing is going a little bit deeper into Rails. So we, now we know how to create a route. Okay, just manually create a route by creating a controller and then attaching that route, that controller to a route using uh, the route table in routes.rb. Cool. Okay, but what if we want to use a database? Okay, now there's a couple different tools we can use. Okay. Now what happens is that by default, if you don't specify a different type of database, Rails is going to use SQLite, which is fine when you're working locally and you're just playing around. Okay. Yeah, it's fine when you're working locally and whatnot, but generally if you're going to deploy to something like Heroku, you're eventually going to want to work with Postgres because that's or MySQL because those are the things that Heroku supports. It doesn't really support SQLite. Okay, but just to get us to these early steps of understanding how to work with the database, um, let's work with SQLite. SQLite is like a self-contained database. You don't have to install like a big database server like you would with Postgres or Mongo. It just creates a little mini database that's in one file. So that way it's great for like development purposes. It's great to just spin up a quick database that you can work with and play with. So what happens is that, and we can see what the database settings are in the config folder. So if we go to config, and we go to database.yaml, we'll see that, like, see here are the settings. Okay, and YAML is a configuration language. It's not just Rails that uses it. You'll see that YAML is used in all over the place to create configuration files. And the way it works is kind of like Python with tabs. So this is saying that this is the default database settings. So basically these are the, st these are the settings for by default. And see each of these other settings, development, test, production are taking those defaults. So if you wanted to change it for all three, if you wanted to change what it does for all three, you can change these details here or add more detail there. Generally, you'll see comments that kind of explain a little bit more detail about how that particular database works. But you see here for development, it's going to create a database called development.sqli3. For a test, it's going to create a database called test.sqli3. And then for production, it creates a production.sqli3. Those are the settings. It hasn't actually done this yet. It doesn't want to read these settings until I tell it to. So to create those databases, I have to run the command rails db. So rails db is always going to be like different commands for your database. I'm going to run rails db create and see that created the database. So I see here development.sqli3 already exists. Uh, create a database test.sqli3. So now if I go here, I should find those databases somewhere. I think it's in the db folder. Yep, there they are. So here's that database and here's that database. Because again, SQLite 3, it's not like a big database server running in the background of your computer. They're actually just, each is database is an individual file, um, which is kind of neat. Okay. Now, let's see here. Now, a couple other commands you can do is that if I wanted to go to the actual console for the database that I'm working with, I can do rails db, uh, actually I think it's just rails db console. Okay, what rails db console does, it takes me to the console for that database. So in this case, it'll take me to the SQLite 3 console. So if I do that, see here I am, SQLite version. If it was Postgres, it would take me to the Postgres terminal, etc. Okay, and then I can run SQL commands here for those, for that database. Uh, I don't need to do that, so I'm just going to quit. I think it's like dot quit to escape. Yep. Okay. I don't use SQLite too often. So I always kind of forget, but again, you can always do dot help to see the list of commands. You could also enter the rails console. So the rails console is really just a Ruby console with all your rails classes loaded in. So that way you can do stuff. So if you want to check that out, you do rails console. I wouldn't worry about that quite yet. But that's how that would look like. And I think the command to exit here would just be exit. Yep, exit. Cool. Okay, so that's a couple things there. Okay, but our, our but the point is now our database is created. Okay. Now what I want to do is create a full CRUD API for, let's say, cats. Okay. We can use the rails generate command and we can generate a what's called a resource 
Okay, and the resource generates ev almost everything for us. Um, but we won't even do that yet. We want to do this like step by step. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to generate a we're going to generate a migration. Uh, actually, no. We'll, we'll do the resource and we'll examine it. So Rails G resource, and we're going to say cat. So we're going to generate a cat resource. And the cool thing is you can actually specify what that cat has here uh, before. So that way you don't have to specify it later. So I'm going to say the cat has like a name, which is, let me just remember the syntax for this, uh, Rails, Rails G resource. There we go. That's what I want to know. Com name data type. That's what I was thinking, wondering of. I thought that's what I thought it was, but I just want to make sure. So we're gonna have a name field, which is a string, and we're gonna have an age field, which is an integer. Okay, and see that's gonna end up creating all that stuff for us. So now when I do this, I hit enter. See, it created all these files for us. So first thing it's gonna create for us is a migration file. So if I go to db migrate, see there's this new file here. This is what's called a migration. So when you're using Ruby to interact with your database, you're never going to really go into the SQLite terminal and create the, the tables and whatnot. You're going to use what's called active record. Active record is what's called a ORM, an object relationship mapper. Okay, what it does, it manages all your database interactions for you. So every time we need to add or subtract tables from our database, we use the migrations. Because the idea is, once we're done, we're gonna deploy this and there's gonna be a fresh database when we deploy, and we wanna make sure that database is identical in structure to this database. So we keep all these migration files, and then when we migrate, it runs these files to create the database, to create tables in the database. So see, it's already done it for us. It kinda, so this is how it looks like. We're creating this migration file, which is going to change our database. What it's going to do is going to create a table called cats. And when it creates the table called cats, it's creating a table column called string column called name and a integer column called age. And it's also going to track the timestamps. Okay. You have to read the rails migration documentation to kind of learn about all the different commands. But the idea is if you know how to use the generate command, you can get it to do a lot of it for you, which is really nice about rails. So in this case, it's kind of set that all up for us. But now what I can do is I can run the migration command. So I do rails db, because again, migration is a database thing. So I run db migrate. Okay. And what it just did is it just read that migration file and actually created the table. So now if I go to, let's see if that table exists now, rails db console. So I'm going to the db console and uh, let's see how we can see the list of tables so dot help i think it's like dot tables or something uh show tables there we go dot tables okay so dot tables okay and there's cats so so the table got created when we ran that migration so nice now i can exit sqlite dot exit okay so the table got created but the way that our software is going to know to do things to that database is through an object. Okay, that's why it's called a ORM, an object relationship mag mapper. So what it does, it creates a model file. So we go back to our app, we see models, and see we see now cat.rb. This creates a class that allows that basically Rails knows that anytime I do something with this class, that it's connected to that table, the cat table. Okay, so when I create a new cat, that's a new cat that gets written to the cat table. When I edit a cat, I'm editing it in that cat table. So it's mapping the database to the object. That's why it's called a object relationship mapper. Okay, cool. So right now our cat doesn't have anything in it. That's fine. We don't need anything in it right now. Okay, and then we get a new controller. So we can create routes relating to that cat. Okay, cat's controller. Okay. And Ruby structure, everything is kind of available and everything, so I can use the cat's object here. So, but here, see, the controller has no functions yet because I used resource. So I have to create all the CRUD functions 
Okay, um, and then I have to, go, we go to routes. So if I go to routes, so again, that's gonna be in the config folder, routes.rb. Notice, see this line right here, resources cats. What resources does is that instead of me having to make like six routes here, you know, for like all the different, like a get route, a post route, a put route, a delete route, this automatically does it. It automatically says, okay, this, this, we have told Rails that make all the CRUD routes for this cats model. So if I type in Rails routes now, Rails routes, I'm going to see that even though I haven't created the functions yet, it's already expecting these routes to exist. So you see here, okay, so I need to make a function in cats. I got to make an index function, a create function, a show function, an update function. Okay, it has all these kind of set up and ready to go. And but I got to make sure that I create these functions or else I won't know what to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up for a second. So it's, we need to create a function called index, create, show, update, destroy. Okay. Cool. Okay. And I'm going to leave it off there. Okay, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll incorporate, we'll do another new project and we'll incorporate Postgres and I'll show you like how these routes will look like and show you like the automated way where it'll generate those routes for you. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Ciao.